It was so sudden. For a few months, I couldn't cry out. I cannot cry. Also, I cannot think. My, my brain is totally empty and white. It was the week before Christmas. MI-185 was flying from Jakarta to Singapore. On board were seven crew members and 97 passengers. I had a phone call from my friend in Japan. He called me, said, where is my husband? This friend knew my husband is in Jakarta, but he, he had some uh, accident news. I went to the airport. He said it was terminal too. Then in the airport, nothing happened. Then I just went home. Then I, after we left, I have a phone call from my Japan embassy. Say, is my husband's flight is missing. Then I knew what's, what, something happened in my husband. The plane had crashed into the Muzi River near Palembang, Sumatra. Everyone on board, including model and writer Bonnie Hicks, died. It was a, a team that's going to be sent by the Singapore government. It comprised a police officer, CID, fingerprint experts, and also forensic pathologists from HSA, and also forensic dentists like myself. After we've arrived, we were expecting uh, wreckages and, and human remains. But the expert told us that the aircraft has very likely nosedive at high speed into the Muzi River. And that has caused the aircraft to disintegrate. Very much like a light bulb that has shattered and disintegrated. Dredger was brought in to dredge the river bed, the Muzi River. And that started to yield more human remains. We start to recover uh, jaw remains. The forensic team identified six passengers. Two from their fingerprints, a child from the size of the remains, one by personal effects, and two from their dental records. Because of their efforts, six of the 104 caskets set up at a local cemetery in Palembang had names. PM is post-mortem, anti-mortem is living alive. So we have an x-ray of a living missing person, of a missing person, and an x-ray of a deceased person. That's how we match. It's the same for fingerprint. You know, fingerprint, the police will come with a database of all the missing person, and then we would compare it with the fingerprint of the deceased in the mortuary. The two dental jaw that were identified was uh, 188 and 117. This is the living person dental record. We compare it to the, the dental finding of, uh, of human remains uh, number 117 and we saw a number of uh, uh, concordances, whether it's in the, the type of the filling, whether it's in the shape, the size, the form of the filling, and many points of similarity. And that's how we arrive at a identification. Now this, we will then prepare a report like this. So AMI 185 was during the time where we have no smartphone, mm. you know, no smartphone, no digital camera. Mm. You know, I was filing SIP rep every day. There was SIP rep, the situation report. Oh. So I was faxing back to headquarters medical call. Well, the experience was entirely new at that point in time. How do you reach out to the families? What do you say exactly to them? Uh, these were never put in practice as far as the local context was concerned. The bottom line uh, in how we deal with cases uh, in our legal system is we are adversaries. But we can't take an adversarial posture in this. Uh, the families didn't choose to be in dispute. Uh, with us or with our clients. They were thrust 
into a situation not of their choosing. I told my team, you know, we have to exercise a lot of patience. We have to be facilitative. We have to be helpful. We have to be patient, you know, and to help widows, widowers, grieving parents, children navigate the process as best as we, as, as, as we could. Silk Air offered the next of kin compensation of between 140,000 and 200,000 US dollars per victim. Six families turned it down. They proceeded to sue Silk Air. Actually, the first two years, I was involved. Firstly, I was very angry with the ally. They, they give us a final result or something. They, they send us a very big report. In the end, they said, cannot find anything. We just want to know the, the fact. I just more tired and tired and uh, no point to, to, to commit this kind of uh, court case. Then I, I think one, one reason is my friend just told me, yeah, don't, don't involve anymore. You, be, you better forget. Then I, yeah, yeah, then I just follow, follow her advice. Then I feel better. It's true. Speculations about the cause of the crash were rife. Among them was that the pilot, Captain Zhu Wei Ming, had crashed the plane on purpose. Suicide was a popular theory to raise, I guess for a couple of reasons. One, it is rather easy to mount. For instance, that um, uh, the pilot may have made um, certain bad investments, you know, in the stock market, he lost money in the stock market, you know, he, he mortgaged the property. These disparate facts or allegations, even if proven, may not all be related or are relevant. I mean, the majority of Singaporeans uh, have investments in the stock market. The majority of Singaporeans have mortgages on their properties. But how often do you run off to say that, you know, we have done something silly with our lives or with the lives of other people? If you are trying to find a reason for why the plane goes down or trying to make sense of how this plane, which appears to be in good working condition would have just suddenly lost its height and, and then plunged into the river. Suicide is a simple, low-hanging fruit. But what we felt all along was that the basis for that theory was very much lacking. And when the evidence was presented and explored uh, during the hearing, um, the court uh, agreed Relationships and the memories of those relationships, I think, will last and outlast um, those, this, this 25 years. My hope and wish to the families that were affected is that you've managed to have closure, you have managed to move on, you have managed to build upon those memories and do dignity and honour to those relationships that you had. Every year, no, I really hate November. Then after I fighting, fighting this funny feeling, then okay. Then December, usually I feel more peaceful. My husband is a very adventurous guy. When he was young, he took a motorcycle to travel in the world. And he loves Amazon, uh, the Africa. That's why the press site is everything, maybe he, his favorite place. So, so maybe I think he chose this place. That's why no choice, I have to accept it. 